Hello friends, welcome back to the series Math for Machine Learning and this is part B of our topic determinant. Alright, so we have seen that uh, now we can multiply, I'm sorry, we can multiply a um, uh, you know, matrix with a vector and it basically is going to transform uh, this vector into a different shape and that shape is getting, uh, you know, it can be stretched uh, that we have already seen, it can be skewed right and it can be rotated right uh, but the problem is of it's fine as long as we you know do all this but then we should be able to go back to our original vector okay now determinant which is the multiplication factor actually tells us whether it is possible or not because we saw an example that you know even after multiplying the matrix uh, it, it was a square earlier and then it got transformed into a straight line so with that we cannot go back to the original form so how do we do it without going into all the diagrams and stuff is simply by finding the determinant of a and if the value is not equal to 0 then we can say that yeah it's fine we can still go back okay but if the determinant is uh, equal to 0 if the determinant is equal to 0 then possibly we have you know uh, deformed the uh, shape of the original vectors and we cannot go back and this is a very important concept and we should keep this in mind determinant of a if it is equal to 0 that means we cannot go back to the original form and if it is not equal to 0 then it's fine we can somehow still manage to go back to the original form so one of the example for this case is you remember we multiplied our vector a dot b which is something like 2 0 0 0 and times our vector whatever it was 1 1 and it only gave us a value 2 0 now how do we calculate determinant of a matrix is uh, these two elements multiplied first okay and then these two so 2 into 0 minus 0 times 0 so which basically is 0 so let's look quickly look into the general form so this is for 2 by 2 matrix so what happens when you go some higher order matrix all right so let's look into the general form so say i have a matrix 2 by 2 and it is represented by a is equal to say a b c d then the determinant of a is nothing but a d minus b c all right if i had a 3 by 3 matrix and say i would represent it by say t then and i have elements say a1 a2 a3 and i have elements in the second column as b1 b2 b3 and c1 c2 c3 then how i do it basically is i first take the first column and the first row and the intersection point is a1 and whatever the remaining elements i have here so i have b2 b3 c2 c3 then i flip the sign so i have minus here and then I take the second column here then the intersection I have B1 and I have elements remaining elements as A2 A3 C2 C3 I flip the sign again so now it's plus and I have the third element here C1 so if I come take the intersection C1 times whatever element I have left A2 A3 B2 B3 now I can do the same exercise for 4 by 4 matrix and so on okay so the main idea basically is to uh, reduce this higher order uh, matrix to again a 2 by 2 matrix so we already know how to calculate a uh, 2 by 2 matrix so very right, simple two elements so uh, this is how we do it now uh, this is a very good way to show that, uh, that for the demonstration purpose it's easy to show this way but the problem is if we do this same calculation in our computer it's actually going to take a long long time and it's not an efficient method to do you know the calculator de determinant this way so instead uh, there is a method called matrix uh, factorization it's called matrix factorization which is basically used to calculate the determinant although the implementation technique could be different but the underlying concept is uh, we are calculating determinant of a matrix 
just to see whether it is equal to 0 or not equal to 0 and depending on that we are going to conclude uh, what will be the output of the matrix multiplication with another matrix or another vector and that is the sole purpose of calculating the determinant and this concept actually will be used to calculate whether we, the operation that we have done is it invertible or not and we will see when we move on to our higher uh, you know advanced uh, mathematics portion in our linear regression and logistic regression we are going to see how this uh, calculation is going to help us in determining uh, loss functions implementing loss function etc and that is why it is important to understand this concept hope you have learned something new today and these are all building blocks and eventually when you go up to the linear regression logistic regression and advanced ml alg alg algorithms all these building blocks are going to play together and that's the beauty of the math uh, for all these machine learning algorithms so i hope you have enjoyed it this video so please subscribe and share it with your friends and colleagues till then have a great day